I've been more interested in gacha games recently because you can pick up concepts that they use for their 3D models and apply it to your own work, since that is professional work that you're learning from. Eventually I'll go over a bunch of different games, but today will be one of my favorites. I'll explain something they do well, then try to apply it to one of my own models later. This is Wuthering Waves, and the first thing that you might notice that they do better than the rest of their uh, competitors is that their 3D models are extremely identical to their 2D art. This is not to say that other games are inferior, or they're not capable of this, but this game's devs made the clear design choice to stick close to the 2D art as a reference, which shows that they have great attention to detail and mastery of what to do to achieve the 2D, 3D look. Now I do have another video that touches on how to go from 2D to 3D, if you're interested in that, but look at the character's profile pictures and how closely the 3D art resembles the 2D art. This is something that's for some reason not prioritized by a lot of developers, but I can tell you it feels a lot more legitimate when the art style is consistent throughout the game. Pretty much every detail, such as the character's features down to the individual hair strands, are translated into the 3D art. Moving on, here's another thing that they do well. They know when to use textured lines and outlines instead of 3D outlines. 3D outlines as in, you know, what we achieve with Solidify in Blender. It pays to have a deep bag of techniques that will be your solutions when running into problems 3D modeling. For example, almost all of the lines in the eyes, the highlights, and the shadows in the hair and the tip of the nose. These things have the lines and textures baked in for a reason. Organic shadows and highlights are very hard to control in hair. As for the nose line, this is because one weakness of the 3D outline is that once it's not on the edge, it disappears. This might be hard to see because of the dark background, but you can see the nose outline here. But of course, when she faces forward, it disappears. And that's where you can see that the textured drawn in nose outline comes into play. And of course, this also means that the 2D and 3D lines match closely in terms of thickness so that you know it all works together seamlessly. And it's not just the lines, but take a look at the accessories as well. There are parts which are fully 3D modeled like this ribbon, which shows me they're willing to go the extra mile on this model. There have been similar cases where the dev would just flat plane this or texture it into the clothing. There are parts where it makes more sense to make it flat. For example, her headband, right? Where the sections are pretty flat. The main takeaway here for us is that as a 3D artist, you're going to have to make a lot of choices of which techniques to use in which situations. I think aesthetically, the modelers for this game made some very good design choices. And then here's another specific detail I want to focus on because I learned a lot from it and applied it to my own 3D models. This game has extremely good looking side profiles. Like, look at this. Specifically, the contours on the nose, the lips, the chin, really well done. And this is a hard detail to get correct because it's subtle. It's not something that people typically focus on when they make 3D models. I think stuff like the eyes, the hair, those get prioritized, but this is a very important detail to get right. And the easiest way I've found to apply this is to, you know, take a screenshot, just reference it. And if we zoom in, there's a technique that's very easy to do, but really makes this mouth pop. There's a drawn in line here, right? You can see it starts dark and a little thicker on the outside. And as it goes in, it gradients to pink, it gets thinner. There's a touch of pink on the upper and lower lip that give it a little life. And there's that little highlight right there to make the bottom lip nice and luscious. The slight emphasis on the corners and the downward turn of the line gives that pouty look that you see on the character. So that's definitely something that you can add to your bag. Let's demonstrate. So this is an older model. Actually, she's just from the series before I disappeared again. But anyways, we got our reference. Let's go to sculpt mode. First thing is the nose. It's very straight. It doesn't have this curve here. Then we can see the upper lip. It curves a little out and it's actually a little straight. So let's try to drag, uh, drag this out, drag this in. And then one thing to be careful of here is that you don't just drag the middle in, but if you drag this part out, make sure the surrounding like lip area, you also like, bring it out a little. Pretty much no lower lip here. We gotta fix that, of course. Come at it from all angles. Sometimes it's good to combine edit mode with sculpt mode as well. Just 
just so we can get this this detail right here like that sharp curve um how are we gonna do this maybe like this that sticks out a little and also the angling of the mouth is needs to be changed a little that natural downward slope then of course the bottom of the chin let's work on that a little too go straight until it reaches the bottom where it kind of comes out a little bit uh, what else okay even here right needs to come in a little like this yep Gonna make sure it's see because sometimes it gets a little weird in sculpt mode. Yeah, I gotta go in and, with the edit mode to fix it a little. Ah, this is it gets very complicated when you don't hide those uh, inner mouth vertices. Okay. Let's bring this chin out a little more, actually. Let's bring this lip out, make it a little more full. This line can go up a little. Surrounding cheek structure is actually not bad. Maybe it could be a little fuller on the cheeks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, so here, Make sure these curve out appropriately. Yeah, see, this might get a little weird because we moved it down, right, with sculpt mode, but the surrounding geometry did not get too affected. So let's compensate for that a little. Double G will move it along the line, so it won't affect the look too much. It will just fix the vertices position. Actually, it looks a bit low. I would say looks a bit low and the bottom lip can still be fixed a little. Let's work with individual vertices for that. Uh, no, that needs to be lower. This needs to be pushed in. Yeah, uh, that'll do for now. The nose is a little far out. Uh, okay. Try to even this out a little. Hopefully that didn't change too much. This mouth line, something to be very conscious of. Has to be straight, at least. Yeah, move that down. Okay. That's looking okay. from a topology level. Now let's go in on the texture level. In UV editing, let's just select everything. The, when we go to texture paint, we have this. It doesn't make sense if the vertices like are going like this and your lip line is going like that. So you gotta make it match and that's why you have to do the mesh first. One thing we might want to do actually is apply the blush first. That would make a lot of sense. So let's go for a pink here, light pink. Make it even more subtle. Then we can go in with the dark. Here we go. Corner of the mouth. Bring it in. I'm trying to make it a little more even from the top and bottom. Okay, it's a little too close to the bottom. Okay, this is how we're gonna do it. Make it thinner at the middle. 
Uh -huh. Actually, make it a little darker at the edges. We'll do the highlights. I don't know if that's too big. Now that it's drawn on, I can see that it's a little low. Now we can go back and we can fix that. Back to sculpt mode. So the top's a little too far out. Yeah. Is it a little low? No, it's just the balance that's a little off. The bottom needs to be a little more. Okay, maybe it does need to go up a little. Let's see. Let's turn on the stroke. See what it looks like with everything combined. It's a little better. It looks a little pouty, like it's looking a little low still. I want these. No, no, not off of those. On these. Yep. Maybe these as well. Move that up a little. Move it all up a little. Let's, yeah. Let's just compare it to something we had before. Okay. Okay, yeah, take a look at that. This is the old, this is the new. Let's go to the same view. Uh, let's turn off the outline. But yeah, at the mesh level, you can already see there's quite some improvement to this. This is very flat. There's no definition on the lips. There's no contour for the nose. Here's the texture. We didn't really have much time to, you know, make it look as good as we want, but that's what we got. Now that might be a small detail and a tiny improvement, but it did make it a touch better to look at from different angles. This is going to sound ambitious, but this year, try my best to hop on Blender every day and make these 1% improvements, and hopefully document most of it to post here on YouTube. As a coming back gift, we'll put today's Patreon file up for free, and it'll just be the head mesh that we used for today's practice. The before mesh is also included in case you wanted to practice with it, or you could just use it for whatever you want. 